Hey guys, thanks for stopping by birdsupplies.com today. This video is going to be about how to choose a bird collar for your uh, pet bird. Um, as you're probably aware, birdsupplies.com specializes strictly in feather plucking birds and birds with some behavioral difficulties. And so uh, we offer a range of products to support feather plucking birds. Collars is one of, uh, one, is one of those items. Collars interrupt the plucking cycle. They don't really stop the plucking behavior unless it's pretty mild. Uh, but, you know, we offer a range of other products that actually support you in developing a management plan to support your bird and uh, instituting a behavior modification, which is the most effective strategy that you can use to uh, uh, resolve feather plucking. So I'm a behaviorist by training. I'm a licensed clinical social worker. I've got a ton of um, a, a ABA uh, experience, applied behavior analysis, which is one of the most effective strategies that you can use to, to uh, curb feather plucking. My site also, my website and my company manufactures a variety of wellness products for parrots to, to support uh, the health and well-being of birds and reduce the physical and emotional stressors that they experience. But uh, you know, this video is going to be about how to choose a bird collar because oftentimes a bird collar is what's going to initially interrupt that plucking cycle. And some people, uh, you know, use bird collars as kind of the preferred method of managing their parrot uh, and. and and buy these you know in bulk and in in, in our subscription program so uh, I don't know how you got to the site but um, uh, a lot of vets recommend our site uh, we've we've heard that it gets a little daunting when you get on that uh, bird collar page and there's eight styles of bird collars and uh, so this video is going to walk you through how to choose a collar for your bird and it's really pretty simple you just need to answer two questions um, first of all you need to look at the three different styles that we have. We have a cone style, which is uh, the, these what I've got in my hand. They're that uh, traditional circular um, style of a collar. You've seen them for dogs and cats and such uh, where the head goes through the hole. Uh, we've got slip-on styles that are pretty lightweight and Velcro. And then we've got uh, a much more robust style for birds that uh, have a very severe problem or even self-mutilate. So cones is our uh, probably most popular style, but we also sell a lot of what we call neck collars. And, and let me grab a couple of those. Um, uh, we've got a very basic neck collar, but neck collars work by um, restricting the movement of the neck. So, you know, uh, you've probably seen your bird, it's neck can practically go around in a 360 and they can just reach just about anywhere on their body. Well these collars work by uh, restricting the range of motion of the neck. It's probably our least restrictive collar to be uh, frank with you. Um, uh, and so when the bird can't move its neck as much or bend as easily, then it uh, doesn't have access to those preferred plucking areas. So neck collars are really quite popular and we, we really love them because they are one of the mo least restrictive uh, collars. They don't affect the activities of daily living as much as say a cone collar that might be a little too long and the bird is, you know, uh, having difficulty walking and climbing and such. Now the third style of uh, apparel that we offer is called a vest, a bird vest. And um, I've, I've made a couple of different styles. This one's a prototype, uh, but it's gotten a lot of, um, you know, attention. And this one, you know, the bird vest actually fits over the torso. So it's kind of like a shirt. Uh, as opposed to a cape or a dress, um, and it just protects the chest and the back. Our styles are for severe pluckers and mutilators. So this one right here, uh, it's not on the website yet, but uh, we hope to get it on there fairly soon. This one um, uses a veg tan leather. It's a uh, three to four ounce weight to make it really hard for the bird to mutilate its own chest. And it also, it also restricts the neck movement a little bit. Um, the one that is on the website, it has a Kevlar insert. And if you are familiar with Kevlar, that's the uh, uh, fabric that um, uh, bulletproof vests are made out of. And uh, I don't know if you've ever seen it, uh, but it's, 
it's pretty it's got a pretty big weave in it and so birds beaks can ultimately destroy it but it take you know it really takes a, a lot of chewing and a lot of effort on the birds part to chew through the Kevlar so anyway uh, getting back to the two questions you want to choose the style do you want a cone the traditional collar that works for I would say you know uh, the majority of birds um, uh, really do well with that. Do you want a neck collar to protect some of those uh, very hard to uh, protect places like the legs, the feet, vent, under the wings, those areas the bird has to bend its neck a lot to get to. And so that's where a, a neck collar is going to be a, a great choice. Or if you've got a mutilator and you really just need to protect that chest area, uh, cockatoos are notorious for this, then the vest is going to be the most appropriate one. So the next question after you choose your style is going to be identifying your bird's severity level. So here at birdsupplies.com, we, uh, we, we rate the severity of plucking on what you might call a Likert scale. So we've got mild pluckers, moderate pluckers, severe pluckers, and then self-mutilators. A mild plucker is going to have just maybe a small patch of uh, maybe a bald patch, or it may have a... Um, just you know tattered feathers in an area this bird has not become really addicted to the problem yet they're kind of tinkering around with it as a coping mechanism for their anxiety or whatnot and uh it's it's not become a habit or a compulsive habit uh, a, a moderate plucker is going to have a, maybe a larger patch or multiple areas on its body that have bald patches and um so they're just a little bit more into the habit. Um, it's still pretty treatable. They got uh, a decent prognosis if they haven't been doing it for very long. But uh, you know, they're working toward that uh, compulsive addiction. By the time they get a severe habit, those birds are mostly bald or maybe they just have down feathers. They're missing most of their feathers. And that is a bird that is just pretty compulsive about the habit. He's really developed an addiction to it. Um, and uh, needs a lot more support, needs you to combine strategies uh, along with the neck, or along with the bird collar, uh, combine it with you know behavior modification and wellness and all of that. Um, you know, the more severe the problem gets, the more strategies you're going to need to use to manage the problem. And so, uh, you know, the severe birds going to need a lot of support. And then finally, a mutilator is a bird that literally chews into its skin and uh, causes tissue damage and is bleeding. And this, at this stage, the bird's like very compulsively addicted to the problem. The, the science behind this, we believe, is that when uh, a bird or a person, you know, causes themselves that level of pain, the brain releases uh, some chemicals that instantly calm it down and soothe it. They're called endorphins. And endorphins uh, are pretty addictive. So the bird will get itself into this cycle of plucking and then uh, medicating itself with these endorphins and then plucking and medicating. And that's how that becomes a compulsive problem because uh, I've heard that you know these these uh, uh, endorphins are about as addictive as as um, you know opo opioids. You hear about these kids that cut on themselves and that sort of thing. That's the same science as as uh, feather plucking is. So once you know the severity of the plucking, it'll help you narrow down your choices of collars even further. So think about a mild plucker who, you know, is just starting out with the plucking. You catch it early. That bird doesn't need quite as much of protection. And so we've got these thin collars here. These are our slip-on styles. They're only three layers thick. The base is like two layers, and then it's got this fringy top that the bird can preen. And it's always better for the bird to chew the collar, of course, than themselves. What you want to do with this level of bird is just interrupt the cycle, and you want to get, you'll probably want to utilize some behavior modification where you're really rewarding the behaviors you want to see more of playing and eating and foraging and stuff like that so these birds would need a thin lightweight collar it doesn't even need to be you know stiff or anything but uh in comparison to what you would use for a severe plucker or a self mutilator i mean there's a huge difference here this one's three layers this one's like 12 layers of, of fleece and on top of that it's got 
a stiffener in it. So the thicker and stiffer the collar is, the more robust it's going to be for those severe pluckers and those mutilators. Um, and so that's one thing to keep in mind. So, you know, we just did a comparison of the mild versus the severe collar for cone style collar. How about we look at um, these neck collars? Uh, when you're looking at the neck collars, this one right here, it's very thin. It's just, you know, uh, uh, a stiff leather insert that is um, sandwiched between this fleece. And this is going to be for a mild plucker. You can always stack these with a, a you know, um, cone collar to add strength for your bird. But look at these. These are much thicker. And um, like this one's got a stiffener in the base that even it's a little bendable but you know this this uh, this fleece here is what one and a half to two inches thick depending on the size uh, and so the, the thickness and the stiffness again make the collar more robust for a severe plucker um, or a mutilator so both of these collars you know work on the same concept birds like to preen this one uh, this one um, is just pretty thick but it's also comfortable it's a it's a foamy uh, insert but uh, they both have excellent uh, reviews and then uh, like I said for our vest those are only for our mutilators uh, because they have that uh, bulletproof Kevlar in them or else that thick veg tan leather that makes it hard for the bird to uh, get at its wound. Um, they'll eventually chew through it. All of these collars, the bird's going to chew. I mean, they're, that's what birds do. They chew for pleasure and um, for emotional satisfaction. And so the, they are going to chew the collars and, and that's why, uh, you know, we offer the subscription program is so that people can uh, get discounts, you know, when they um, buy them repeatedly. But I hope that helps you out. Choose your style first, then your severity, and uh, it'll narrow it down to a couple of different collars. Um, so for instance, if you were looking, okay, hey, I, I know my bird's severe, I'm gonna need one of these thick ones. Um, you know, you could make a choice at that point in time or you could um, order, you know, a couple of them. It, a lot of our customers will have several different styles, you know, like for instance, say their bird's hormonal and it's going through even a more severe plucking than usual, you might want something more robust and use this during ordinary times when it's just, you know, it needs support, but maybe not this level. So it, it helps to have a couple of different collars on hand. And then, you know, our collars are washable. So, you know, if, if you would like have two collars on hand, you could always put one on the collar on the bird while the other one's in the wash and whatnot. So again, hope it helps you out. If you have any questions, you know, don't hesitate to reach out. I'm available via email. There's a contact form on our website. You can text me and I always love to do free consultations with my customers and support you in finding the correct products to uh, um, help your bird. So thanks again for watching and you guys have a nice evening. Bye-bye.